medicinal plants and herbs have played a significant role in history during wars and battles. In this video, we dive into four herbs, wars and battles and explore the role of herbs within them. So if you want to learn more about the connections between war and herbs, then watch this video. Let's go. War is an uncertain time, but almost every single civilization through history has participated in war. During these times of war, there's evidence that herbs were used to support people in healing, recovery, stamina, pain relief, immunity, and even to help stop bleeding. Fun fact, if anyone here has seen the movie 300 that depicts the Spartan army from ancient Greece, the only scene in that movie where anyone actually eats is when Leonidas, after he defeats Xerxes for the first time, is seen crunching on a red apple. And and funnily enough, when I saw that scene, that's one of the reasons why I set out to look into the historical uses of foods and herbs during wartime. Sticking with ancient Greece for a second, you know, it's been documented that herbs were eaten drank and applied to wounds during that time. But also, Roman soldiers mixed fennel seeds with their meals to assure fighting strength and courage during battle. Fennel as well as other herbs like thyme were revered during those times and fragrant herbs were also used to honour the gods. This is just one example of the historical association of different cultures with herbs. But during wartime, things get a bit deeper. So let's paint a picture of what war would have been like back then. So picture this. You get a call to arms, you train for a while, you get to the battlefield and these are times before guns, missiles and drones. It's really hand to hand combat with heavy armour on and time wise this goes on and on. In movies war scenes are depicted as relatively short but Asian battles have been shown to last for at least a few hours and that's a few hours of consistently being on high alert, waving your weapon or sword, being paranoid, having fear, hormones are rushing through your body, you're in consistent fight or flight mode and this has been activated throughout the fight and in the likely chance that you get injured or somebody cuts your hand off and you have to go through the painful experience of surgery and healing, you have to bear in mind that there was no antibiotics, these were invented in 1928. There was no pain relief in the traditional sense. All they had was opiates and this was used from the 16th century onwards. And even this was extracted from the addictive opium poppy, which led to a lot of addictions. Opium poppy also is a herb. And then the next pain relief came from codeine and this only became popular from the mid 1800s. And even so, these were very, very dangerous times to fight wars or be ill in general. Nowadays, if there's something wrong, you can be put to sleep, you can have your surgery, you can wake up, pop some pills and actually feel no pain. But during those times, those wars were very, very different and they were fought different. So for thousands of years before modern advancements, all people had to rely on were herbs. But before I get into the four war examples and the herbs that were used, I must say modern advancement in technology, healing, medicine, herbalism is a big blessing because historically you can die from so many issues that nowadays are so simple and easy to treat. For example, did you know that a lot of people used to die from vitamin C deficiency or scurvy? In fact, during the 1800s, disease killed more British soldiers at wartime than enemy action. This was over 100,000 sailors who died and scurvy was the main cause of death. So even travel back then to the battleground could have killed you. So with that tone set, let's get into the four examples of herbs used during wartime in history. The first herb historically used during battle was makaru. In what would be today's Peru, historically housed the Incan Empire. The Incan Empire started out in a small region and through warfare, diplomacy and negotiations, they managed to expand their empire a lot into the neighbouring lands. Their army also grew. Records show that sometimes they were able to gather up to a quarter million soldiers to scare enemies and prevent a battle. But what makes them interesting in the context of this video was their rituals of war and also some of their habits. For example, the Incan warriors before wartime performed sacrifices to their gods. On top of these rituals, the Incan warriors also consumed makaru and this is for its medicinal and health benefits. They really did rate makaru so high that it was even used to barter and as a form of currency. But before it was time for war, 
In the Incan era, it was given to warriors before battle as they at that time believed it would increase their strength and stamina and help them be successful to live to fight another day. Also, the Incas used the leaves of the coca plant to numb people who were in pain. So this was also likely done during wartime. And for context of a timeline, the Incas existed around the 12th century AD. And later on, this exact same practice of using coca to numb people's pain was later adopted by modern doctors. So they were really ahead of their time. Coca leaves is a herb and is actually what cocaine is made from. Coca cocaine if you see narcos you get the correlation the second herb historically used during battle was yarrow yarrow has been used at different times in history as a war aid the latin name of yarrow is achelia meliofolium which is said to come from the name Achilles. You may know the name Achilles as it's a warrior Achilles who was one of the great heroes of Greek mythology. Achilles was said to be strong, loyal and courageous but he had one vulnerability which was his Achilles heel. The plant's name was said to derive from him as during the Trojan War he used it to treat his and his soldiers wounds. The herb was said to have properties of reducing blood flow from wounds and if you fast forward to 1914, Yarrow was collected by children during the first world war and sent to the front lines to be used to help stop bleeding and to heal wounds. It's said that Yarrow helps stop bleeding by renormalizing the pressure throughout the body and it also is a natural disinfectant. During wartime infections was a big big killer and this is another reason why Yarrow is also referred to as soldiers wound worth. During these times of war, historically, you have to envision it. You have to just close your eyes and just picture what the environment was like. People are getting injured and the first aid kit at that time had Yarrow in it. Yarrow was in different forms, but one of the main forms it was applied in was Yarrow powder. And also, disease is what killed a lot of people during war. So herbs like this were said to have beneficial effects on fevers, cold and flus. So during those times it was beneficial for a lot of different reasons. But what I find really interesting about the historical use of Yarrow during wars was the sheer amount of people that were enlisted to help pick and forage these herbs. Children from all over Britain collected amazing amounts of herbs during World War I and World War II. In World War II, in 1942, they gathered a thousand tons and this grew year on year and in 1944, the target was set at 4,000 tons or 4 million kg and these included other herbs, not just yarrow. But what's interesting, at that time or the difference between World War I and World War II was that during World War II, these herbs were also used to try and extract their active components out such as their saponins, their phenols and their flavonoids. As always guys, all my research links are in the description if you want to learn more. Make sure you take a second to hit that like button just down below. The third herb historically used during wartime was stimulant herbs. There was a kingdom known as the Zulu Kingdom who under their first king, King Shaka Zulu, grew immensely and they grew through war negotiations and they grew their empire to around 11,500 square miles and this was by 1825. The Zulu kingdom would have been present in where today South Africa would be. Fast forward to around 1850s and the British were expanding their empire. They already had colonies in some parts of South Africa and cut a long story short, they presented the then King Shetwayo with an ultimatum. Disband your army and accept British residency or a war will ensue. King Shetwayo actually turned down the offer as it meant he would have lost his throne and this is what started the Anglo-Zulu War. During the first attack, the British faced the Zulu warriors who were seemingly immune to their modern rifle fire and the reason they seemed immune or zombie-like to these rifle bullets were the cocktail of herbs that they were provided by their shaman before battle. Cocktail that they drank included herbs locally known as interlizzi. This was a traditional plant taken in purifying rites to boost morale, along with a medicated beer called dagger, which contained a variety of the modern. This had a stimulating effect, along with a potent painkiller and hallucinogenic called Bushman's poison bulb. It's said that all of this combined turned them into fearless warriors similar to zombies who were immune to gunfire and this is because they were really high or stimulated and what's actually interesting about this first battle is that the Zulus won this battle which was essentially spears versus guns but although they won the battle 
they did not win the war. Historic text states that the British army had suffered its worst defeat against an indigenous foe with a vastly inferior military technology. But the second time that the British attacked, they actually won the war, which is what ended the Zulu Empire and the Zulu Kingdom. This all sounds like a crazy long time ago, but for context, here is a photograph taken in Bond Street, London of the then ruler King Shet Wael. If you're finding any of this interesting, make sure you drop a comment, make sure you drop a like. The fourth herb historically used during wartime was Calendula, also known as Mary Gold, but also bonus herb was Valerian. During World War I and II, Valerian was used to treat shell-shocked troops and calm down civilians from the psychological effects, nervous effects of air raids. So you have to imagine the time, right? A lot of bombs were dropping from the sky. People were shell-shocked, people were nervous, people were scared. And Valerian root mixed with other botanicals such as hops or kava kava was used as a potent sedative to induce hypnotic sleep. This was just one of the herbs used during that time. Another herb is calendula, also known as marigold, and it's said that calendula was what saved many people during World War I. Calendula flowers were used externally on wounds to help slow down bleeding and for its antiseptic properties, and it was also used as dressing on wounds to promote healing. So, I hope you enjoyed that video. It's mixing a bit of history with herbalism or herbal medicine. Be sure to leave a thumbs up and comment if you want a part two. If you want to learn more about herbs, click on my face and get my herb guide. And before you go, check out these two videos right here and right here. It's your brother Paulo Tote, certified herbalist, nutritionist. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.